Veteran journalist and former diplomat John Kwelani scored a legal victory in the Supreme Court of Appeal when the court found that the current definition of hate speech is unconstitutional and invalid. Kwelani authored a controversial opinion piece about uh, same-sex marriage in the Sunday Sun in 2008. In the article, Kwelani supported uh, Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe's stance against homosexuality. He slammed laws which allowed for same-sex marriages because, as he put it, at this rate, soon, how soon before some idiot demands to marry an animal? Well, the ruling for Kwelani, the Supreme Court said that the, whilst his comments were hurtful, they did not amount to hate speech under the current definition. Constitutional law expert Pierre de Foss was quoted in the judgment and he joins us now via Skype. Pierre, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Always a pleasure to talk to you. So you were quoted by the Supreme Court in this particular judgment, which means that you had thought about this and had some issues with the legislation. What was your concern about it? Well, <clears throat> the concern that I had and <coughs> still have <coughs> is very much the same one that the Supreme Court of Appeal had, and that is that the section if you read it properly, um, says that you can be guilty of hate speech if a reasonable person might think that you have the intention to, to be hurtful to somebody else because of their race, their sex, their gender, their sexual orientation. And it seems to me, and the Supreme Court of Appeal now agrees, that is very broad. So a lot of, of ordinary political speech might then become hate speech. So if you say men are trash, a reasonable person might <laughs> have the intention to be hurtful towards men and that would be hate speech. It seems to me that goes too far and that's not just a, a justifiable limitation on freedom of expression, um, which is protected in the Constitution. All right, so the key word here, I suppose, is taking out hurt. Uh, yes, so the, the Supreme Court of Appeal was not yeah. so clear about this, yeah. but um, they made it clear that the, that part where it says that it can uh, must either be hurtful yeah. or it must be harmful or incite harm, um, the first part, hurtful, is clearly too broad. They rewrote the section and they said that what you really need, uh, they, they have quite a strict definition, maybe too strict, but they said you have to show that the there was incitement to cause harm, and you have to make your, uh, your, your speech must constitute advocacy of hatred. So that's quite a strict um, uh, interpretation. Um, um, but that we now have to go to the Constitutional Court. All right, so I mean, <laughs> I'm just thinking uh, out loud now. So some speech might not be uh, insightful when you look at it literally, but some people might look at it and interpret it figuratively and do cause harm. How do we manage in a situation like that? Well, it's very difficult because mm. the context is all important, so it's quite difficult to make a legal rule yeah. that applies to everything but takes mm. into account that the effects might be different. If you um, direct your speech at the vulnerable that has the history of being subjected to bigotry and so on. Mm. The effect yeah, of the Supreme Court of Appeal deals with it, they say, well, it, ha it has to be an objective test. You have to look from the outside, you have to ask what is the actual effect that is complaining of the hate speech, and that should be the test. Whether that will work in each case is uh, debatable, but that's what I said. All right, so the Human Rights Commission uh, took this action and they were using uh, Section 10 of the Promotion of Equality and Prevention of Unfair Discrimination Act. So are we saying that that act it doesn't, uh, I don't know, come into play here or uh, does, it, does it have a role? Yeah. Well, the, the, the Equality Act, so-called Papuda, um, regulates, prohibits discrimination and also prohibits this form of hate speech. What the Supreme Court of Appeal has now said is that specific provision on hate speech, which is the only provision in our law that actually regulates hate speech, mm. the Constitution doesn't prohibit hate speech, 
it's the Equality Act that does that. They say that is unconstitutional. Of course, that ruling has no legal effect until the Constitutional Court decides on it. And if they confirm the decision, it's mm. only then whether this Section 10 um, will be unconstitutional and invalid. So we will have to wait for the Constitutional Court before we know what the consequences of this judgment really will be. Based on what you've heard and your own feelings, it sounds as if the Constitutional Court will probably uh, confirm this decision. Well, the Constitutional Court, it seems to me, has two options. Either they can reinterpret the provision and narrow its scope by giving it a different interpretation from the Supreme Court of Appeal and say, well, now we've made it narrow, it's not so broad, and so it's constitutionally compliant. Or they will probably they will have to say that it's an infringement of freedom of expression, it clearly is, and then they'll have to go and say, is this a justifiable limitation? And they might then say, well, it could have been achieving the same very important goal of protecting people against the harmful effect from speech. I do, do so in a narrower way so that it doesn't go too far and valuable speech that needs to be protected. All right, so how do we remedy a situation where people genuinely feel hurt by certain comments? So, for example, a, a right-wing politician says, black people are stupid and lazy. That can cause an uproar, mm. but the way we're talking, it yeah. seems as if he has every right to say that. Yeah, you see, the, the thing with rights are just because you have a right to do something doesn't mean that it is right to do it. And so there are many things that are permitted, but that no, no, uh, no sane person, no person with humanity, empathy, some kind of compass is going to do. And so the law does not prohibit things, things which most of us would not uh, uh, agree with. Um, and the reason for that is that in the, in the human rights, at least, is that it's difficult to draw the line um, and to um, to make sure that people have a right to say just without it being severe harm. All right, Pierre, we're going to leave it there because the line's starting to break up. But thanks very much indeed for your insights. And uh, yeah, I think you deserve a cup of tea. It's not often everyone gets quoted by the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That is a constitutional law expert, Pierre de Fos, who was uh, quoted by the Supreme Court, uh, that ruled in favor of John Poilani, who said that uh, his comments, uh, his anti-gay comments, might have been hurtful for some people, but uh, that was a breach of his freedom of speech. But, however, the Supreme Court have uh, ordered Parliament to relook at this law, but uh, we wait for the Constitutional Court to confirm the Supreme Court's judgment. All right, that's where we'll leave that for the time.